Raj and DK, the overlords of the OTT space, are back with yet another show, this time on a competing platform, Netflix, and the show is called Guns and Gulabs. Is it as good as their Amazon shows, that is, The Family Man, Citadel to Come, and Farzi that came out earlier this year? I don't think so, but is it enjoyable? Absolutely yes. The director duo have gone and put together what I will classify as their most formidable ensemble cast yet. You have Dulkar Salman, you have Rajkumar Rao, you have Adarsh Gaurav, you have Gulshan Devaya, you have Shreya Dhanvantri. The list is endless. Now, I'll be honest, I didn't think I was going to be making a video on this show, but as soon as I finished it, because of what episode 7, which was actually episode 7 and 8 was, I knew immediately as I finished it that I had to make this video. Call it recency bias, but that is one of the best series finales we have seen in Indian OTT history. If this series finale existed in another universe, it would have probably been directed by Quentin Tarantino and Priya Darshan, not Rajan DK. But in this universe, of course it's Rajan DK. It had to be. The non-linear storytelling, the black comedy and everyone converging in one place by the end of it and yet each and every major character getting their closing arcs in the story was just beautiful. Unlike their other shows, this one takes its time to build up. It's slow, it has a lot of silences, but that is where the actors excel. Going into the show, I thought, oh, there's Dulgar Sarman and Rajkumar Rao. Everything is going to be about these two characters because they're the biggest names in the show. And yes, while they do have their own respective arcs, which are pretty prominent, it is Gulshan Devaya and Adarsh Gaurav who absolutely stole the show and every single scene that they were in, no matter who they shared the space with. Gulshan Devaya is the literal embodiment of a grim reaper. He is so good, he is so scary and he is so creepy. And the creative choices that the directors have taken with his character just make it that much more fun to watch on screen. And Adarsh Gaurav, my god. After the White Tiger, what an absolute banging way to come back to the OTT space. He is excellent. He is scary, he is menacing, he is enduring, he makes you believe in his story. And yes, Throughout the series, he leaves little crumbs of hints and if you catch on to them, the twist at the very end of the series is not going to be a surprise to you. He is so good with his craft, it is mind-blowing. I cannot wait to see what he has in store next. My god is the payoff amazing and it has me so much more excited than I thought I would be for season 2 of the show, which is not a matter of if, it is a matter of when it comes out. I've always maintained that Raj and DK's main power is yes, their direction, but also their understanding of the characters and the dialogue writing. Sumit Arora once again writes some so bizarrely amazing and beautiful dialogues that it just baffles you to listen to what these characters are saying. And yet, some of the dialogues make you stop, think, and then go ahead with the show with a smile on your face. Also, a special shout out to Tanish Chaudhary who plays the role of Gangaram, an absolute blast in this show. It is so fun to watch him on screen. Also, can I just say what an absolute delight it is to see Satish Kaushik on screen again. He's not with us, but his craft always will be. There are a lot of conveniences that are taken in the storytelling in the show. And yes, it is a little slow paced. Yes, it takes some time to get going. But my biggest takeaway from this is that they can still give you the same family man fuzzy feel while you watch any of their work and yet create a completely different universe. It takes you back in time with all the references and even though I wasn't even born during that era, I could relate to all the references. I could relate to the Gold Spot, the Campa Cola, the Jhankar Beats references, the Brian Adams songs, all of it. It's like getting into a time machine which has a few bumps on the way but the payoff is amazing. Also, a big big thank you to whoever put their minds together and merged episode 7 and 8 into a singular episode 7 with an interval in the middle of the episode. A 1 hour 20 minute episode with an interval in the middle, it felt like I was watching a feature film and trust me, it was better than half the thrillers that you've been seeing in the recent past. If the show somehow would have ended at episode 6, I probably wouldn't have been making this video or highly recommending it to anyone. I still would say that it's not their best work, but just for episode 7, which is episode 7 and 8, go watch the show. It is dark, it's funny, it's violent, it has closure, and it is just Raj and DK in their element. I cannot wait to see what most of these people who were involved in making this show have in store for us next. But that said, I will see you soon, hopefully with the King of Kothar review. Till then, take care. Peace.